Uh, coming up here next, we have uh, Linda Rayma and her friend Jordan from Room to Grow in Clinton. Uh, it's Room to Grow Pregnancy Center. Uh, they're helping young women answer what now. They will tell us about the operations center, and after their presentation, they will answer any questions that you may have. The free will offering uh, tonight will be donated to Room to Grow. Uh, for the continued support to these women and children, please welcome Linda and Jordan. I did ask permission to move this. I need my wall of security here. Okay. Yeah, so cute, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's further vertically challenged, yeah, yes. Right yeah. Watch this. Watch that. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Magic. Magic. <laughs> Is it on? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, my name is Linda Rankema. Um, Room to Grow began about five and a half years ago with a dream and vision to be a safe place for young teens to go from private pregnancy tests and to be able to speak about what their options would be. We explain the serious consequences of four different items parenting, open adoption, closed adoption, and termination of pregnancy. We have life-size models there of what a baby looks like at a particular gestation time. We would not refer to any abortion clinics, and we do not advocate for abortion. I personally held a baby that was scheduled to be aborted, but the team thought, let's just stop and see what we're all about. After talking with her, she apparently canceled her abortion clinic and came to see me seven months later with a little girl who was doing great. This dream started in December 2010 with the rental of a small room in Nine Rock, New York Street. A little money, lots of faith. Since that time, we've been blessed beyond our wildest imagination. While we still do free pregnancy tests, we are now supporting these same young women in raising children. We have moms' educational groups every Wednesday in Clinton, Goddard, and Exeter. We discuss parenting methods, budgeting, future planning, we do crafts, we discuss relationships, we meal plan, we have open and honest discussions sometimes, and I'm not here some of it, but we can say it. In Clinton, Monday is a drop-in day, where moms just come in and hang out and speak with anyone who walks in for a pregnancy test. Friday is a choir day, where the moms come to me for one-to-one -one support, and the business of paying the bills and filling out the paperwork and making tax papers is done. Dr. Aaron Ross, a well-known clinical psychologist and volunteer her Friday lunch hour to provide professional counseling to anyone who wants it. Over the past five years, we have supported hundreds of young women with their pregnancies and parenting. We have supported moms with their carriers when they have miscarriages. And the word support can entail so much. We find apartments, jobs, working with children's aid society, family court system, drug addiction, helping to understand that they're in an abusive relationship and finding them a way out, finding them baby items such as cribs, diapers, blankets, clothes, strollers, car seats, etc. We are the listening ear, the safe place to land. We've also been able to set up bursary funds for post-secondary education so that for the first time they feel like they can get out of the welfare system and provide for their children a positive role model. We have set up interest-free loans in the event that they can't afford first and last month's rent. We try to work together with community resources set in place, such as Choices for Change, Addiction Services, Educational Resource Center, Subsidy Housing, Habitat for Humanity. We truly love these young women and will do anything for them. Through these groups, the women have developed their own core family and relationships and friendships. Last week alone, I had a new mom tell me that if it wasn't for room to grow, she would have terminated her pregnancy because she did not want this baby. But through the support of all the other moms, she did not feel so alone. The majority of women, that these women come from broken homes and dysfunctional families and have never experienced unconditional love and support. Or the only people that they have known are addicted to drugs or have made too many changed wrong choices. And now they're either on welfare or disability because of trauma, lack of education, social anxiety. We try to teach them to become mature role models for the babies. We do not judge them. We will let them know that we will be there for them no matter what. We provide a positive role model. Maybe even a, more like a mother, in my case, was more of a mother figure that they never were fortunate enough to have. Our support is unconditional, completely confidential gossip, 
in high school type drama is not allowed in the room. It just doesn't accomplish anything good. We're trying to set up a dad's group. We had um, uh, Reverend Ryan Yancey from the Zur- from Kingsfield Mennonite Church, but now he's working full time in Zurich, so he's finding it difficult to uh, carry on. So we're trying to find a replacement for him. So the baby daddies who learn how to be a positive partner and father. We finally chaired an organization and then submit tax receipts. We do not receive any money for whatsoever from the government. We run strictly on donations and volunteers. Godly, God has truly blessed this house. We know we are doing God's work, and it's Him that is blessing us. But we cannot continue this work without your support, such as you're providing us tonight. We do not know what the future holds for us, but we trust God will keep nudging the women to come in and see us, pregnant or not. When we first started, people would ask me, do you really think there's such a need in here in county? You know, it's a close-knit community. I know it's supposed to be a funny thing, so <laughs> hard for me, but it was reality. For example, I have a mom who didn't know that her sister was actually her mother until she was 13. I had one mom that was sexually abused by her stepdad for three years until she ran away at 15. I had one mom who sent out in all kinds of weather to purchase her parents' cocaine until she ran away when she was 14. I had one mom who was blinded in one eye because her dead stepdad beat her. I have also had religious groups tell me my daughter would never do that, my son would never do that. And I can tell you, there's someone who one thing stands in their way. It's two years. That's all that makes a difference. We need to reach out into the community as Jesus went to the Samaritans and spoke with the Pharisees. Thank you from all our mentors for thinking of us and giving me this opportunity to speak with you tonight. I'd like to introduce you to Jordan, who's a prime example of why we do what we do. She's come so far and she's doing so well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jordan Stryker, Jordan Fashion, Jordan King. Uh, I'm Richard Grotto Mills and loves me as just Jordan and I wouldn't change out for anything. And you good people are about to hear a lot about me in the next six and a half minutes. (laughs) Standing here today makes me realize really how much my life has changed and how grateful I am for the obstacles not only thrown at me, but for the ones placed in front of me, but for the ones I placed in front of myself as well. A year ago, if I was asked to talk about me, I would have shot that down, no questions asked. For the first time ever, I'm telling my story. I'm telling it with my newfound, full-throttled confidence. I was 18 years old and 8 months pregnant when I married my 27-year-old husband. The first year of my marriage was typical. Bliss and babies. We had a home, vehicles, jobs, two sons, one stepson, and my half-sister all under our roof, like we were the perfect home. It wasn't until my husband started finding comforts in my best friend's arms and bed that our marriage, happiness, freedom, home, and family structure came to an abrupt halt. The day my best friend texted me, telling me everything that had been going on between her and my husband, I was arrested, I was taken out of my family home, I was charged with mischief for breaking our wedding photos, I was charged with assault, I slapped that man so hard I actually felt bad. I'm not saying him cheating on me was all his fault and I was the perfect wife, but I mean I was the least to say shocked. Hurt, mad, and confused. I was only 22 at this time. Being arrested and fingerprinted the same day my marriage had an unexpected and fatal, fatal aneurysm didn't exactly make the list of my bad days. It put that list to shame. I didn't even know how or why it started, but soon enough, before I could even comprehend what was going on in my life, I was now literally nose deep in the infamous drug cocaine. Months went by that felt like weeks. I lost all interest in things I used to enjoy. I was angry all the time at everyone but myself. I was sleeping all day, if I slept at all. I was up all night with my new friends, enjoying that it was so simple, it was as simple as a little white magic powder to make me forget about the reality. To make me, to make me forget about that I just skipped family court that day. To make me forget it's been a week since I last asked to see my boys. To make me forget about my repeating arrests my stacking charges, my careless actions, and to make me forget what I couldn't face, 
My biggest, biggest accomplice, accomplishment became my biggest failure. As we all know, it happens. I started being questioned by social faith society, but the rumors that weren't actually rumors. That I was doing drugs and making stupid decisions, and I couldn't see it at the time, but there I sat with CIS, bags under my eyes, high strung, emotional, rudely trying to convince them that I was fine when everyone in the room knew otherwise. I thought my first real heartbreak was my husband throwing our family away from my best friend. But my first real true heartbreak was when the final <coughs> order was placed, putting my boys in my husband's care and custody and leaving me with limited supervised access. I obviously have never been to hell, but I truly believe I lived in something close. With a then one and a half and two and a half year old clinging on to me for their dear lives as our two and a half hour supervised visit in the basement of a building came to an end. Well, that was enough for me to give them what they wanted, their mother back. I had to drop all my friends, because let's face it, any friend who will sit there and help you get the drug that turns you into someone you're not isn't a friend at all. I had to delete Facebook, I had to get rid of my cell phone, I had to tell my mom what was going on in my new world. She put me on her own house arrest and, her, and in her home, no friends allowed in, and I wasn't allowed out for about a month. When I started my next chapter, since I don't have the next two years to fill you in on everything, I do want to say that I'm proud to say I'm sober. One hiccup in my road of sobriety, but other than that, I'm a sober, sober human being again. Mm-hmm. And since I've been to my own hell and back to normal living, let me tell you the honest truth about both worlds. When you live in a world of pure evil, evil is sure to follow you. Evil things happen to you that leave you living in that hell. The thing about this type of world is that once you're in it, there's very few things that can get you back up and onto your feet. In this hell, there is always one tiny, tiny little exit with a sign above it, and you can choose to leave. I found that little light, and the sign above it said room to grow, and I could see my voice just pass up light. Before I could reach that light, I had to suddenly take on new responsibilities. I had to understand that no one was going to trust or believe me, and I needed to prove them wrong. I needed to get my butt back into the courthouse and get myself a good lawyer and dedicate every day for, to fighting for my boys. I had to promise to stay away from bad friends and be the best sure that I could be. If I were to fail any of these things, I'd end up right back to where I was, miserable and very lonely. I accepted the challenge. Here's my chance to do what I wanted to do for two years and thank all the moms at Room to Grow who helped me with exchanges of my kids, who sat with me and shared their wisdom. Thank you to all the moms who cooked lunches for all the wild kids and loving them like they're yours. Thank you for always being real. Thank you for being my biggest support team. But my biggest thank you goes to Linda Rekha, founder of Room to Grow, entrepreneur at her finest, <laughs> mother to all of us moms. You shine the brightest to me in this room. When you're smiling at me, I know I'm doing okay. When you're scowling at me, I know it's because I did something silly. But when you're crying, it's because I need another obstacle in my life that you're right there to push me to the finish line. If it weren't for you and your amazing group of moms and kids, I'd still be living in my own hell. Thank you for getting us out of that basement and helping me get my visits that room to grow. And even welcomed my boys and I into your room and became an official supervisor for me. Thank you. Thank you for staying on my butt about doctor's appointments, about my drug screenings, being on time and teaching the value of my promise. Thank you for getting me my job that I love. Thank you for a hundred more things that I swear if I had more than ten minutes for, I'd thank you for. Because everything you've done for me and my boys is amazing. I'm now having regular overnight sleepovers with Oakley and Luxon, my now four and five year old, unsupervised. I'm now part of Oakley's school and Luxon's daycare and it's not stopping there. We have court again soon to grant me more custody and when I say we, I don't mean my ex-husband and I, I mean Linda and I. Room to Grow has helped many, many younger and older moms. They have helped single and married moms. Room to Grow has helped addicts or moms who just have no one else. Whatever us mom need, moms need, Room to Grow will help us get it. Whatever goals us moms have, Room to Grow will get us there. If it weren't for this wonderful group, all of us moms would be missing something a part of us. Every mom, every mom there needs Room to Grow as an outlet, as a support, as a confidant, confidant or even just a place to breathe. We have rooms for that. Room to Grow is my biggest support team. 
that I'm proud of all mine. Thank you, thank you to everyone who's donated time, money, or baby items. You've been a part of changing many women and children's lives for the absolute better. better. Thank you, Linda, for showing me the meaning of God's love. I don't know if we have any questions. I can just say, uh, Linda, thank you for founding this wonderful uh, room to grow. It certainly uh, shows um, shows the great things you're doing here. And yes, there's many of us, me included, who doesn't like to admit this stuff happens in Grand County, right? And, and um, just thank you for your drive, for your timeless time and patience and stuff that you demonstrate every day, uh, but most of all for your heart. That's what really goes a long way. And um, Jordan, wow. Um, all I had to do was say that I was MC and the church I came from. I would not have it. It's wonderful you do, for you to share so much of what you've gone through. It just proves, uh, I think, to everyone that when you have uh, the right support, the love, and everything that goes along with it, um, lives can be changed. And it's a true example with room to grow. Let's let's have another hand for Linda.